Using a limited palette of just primary colors and black and white will really test and improve your color mixing abilities. Once you master these skills, you should be able to mix thousands of different colors. But that doesn't mean you have to limit yourself or your palette. More than likely, over time, you'll be adding new colors to your palette. The point is to do it carefully and intelligently. You may want to add certain hues that just can't be created using the primary colors. More modern colors, such as dioxazine purple, gamblin's mono orange, or phthalo emerald. If you're a landscape painter, you may demand a wider range of colors, including varieties of greens, blues, and reds. Portrait painters augment their palettes with pigments ideally suited to reproducing hair and skin tones, such as burnt sienna, cadmium red light, and Naples yellow. Before the development of modern colors, artists relied on earth tones, such as burnt and raw sienna, burnt and raw umber, yellow ochre, and Indian red. Earth tones have been around for thousands of years and are proven permanent. Compared to modern colors, they may lack brilliance. But artists like Rembrandt overcame their limitations by using grays and dark colors to visually intensify the earth colors. They depended more on values than they did on a variety of colors. Today, earth colors are generally used to darken or mute other colors and for creating underpaintings. When purchasing paint, be aware that colors may vary slightly from manufacturer to manufacturer. Here, for instance, are two different brands of raw sienna. They look noticeably different. This may have to do with the source or quality of the pigments. Pigments and dyes have been standardized by the Society of Dyers and Colorists and these designations are often listed on the tubes of paint. For instance, here's a tube of cerulean blue. Look on the back. It says PB35, which means pigment blue 35. Try to stick with paints made from a single pigment. They're more expensive, but they're pure and will go further. They're also easier to mix, and the mixtures will be more vibrant. Before you add a color to your palette, Test its properties, including tinning strength, opacity and transparency, and viscosity. Use it in a value scale. See how it mixes with other colors. How to modulate its intensity, and so on. Tinning strength has to do with how strongly a particular color or pigment affects or tints another one when mixed with it. For instance, here we have equal portions of phthalo blue and titanium white. Mixed together, you can see phthalo blue has a high tinting strength. Opacity and transparency have to do with how effectively paint covers underlying paint layers. Opaque paints are effective in hiding underlying colors. Whereas transparent paints allow colors underneath to show through. Viscosity is another way of saying how stiff a paint is, whether it's hard to mix, and if it's creamy and easy to spread or hard to brush. On this DVD, you'll find a downloadable PDF we refer to as a color audition chart. Test out new colors by putting it through its paces using this chart. This chart addresses the same color characteristics we discussed throughout this program. I wanted to introduce cerulean blue, so I filled out a chart using our new color. It's easy enough to fill in the color name and brand. And a lot of the other information is located on the back of the tube, such as the pigment and the permanence designation. The toxicity is also indicated and the bias is to yellow. Now let's start testing the color. As you can see, it covers the black bar, so it's an opaque color, not transparent. To test the tinting strength, I've mixed equal parts of white and cerulean blue. The tin is fairly light, so we can say it has a low tinting strength. Now we're going to evaluate our color based on our value scale. So I'm thinking it falls right about here. I'll fill in the square, and from there go lighter and darker.
Next, we're going to play around with the intensity of our cerulean blue. I've already filled in the hue as well as its complement. Next, I'll create a neutral from these two colors and create varying shades of intensity. For our last section on color bias, we're going to see how our cerulean blue interacts with two other primary colors, our yellow and our red, using different undertones. And we'll see what variety of colors we get. And when we're all done, we have an excellent piece of reference material to file away and use another day.